Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this glorious occasion. Uh, I, don't, I didn't want you to miss out on any of uh, the speaking and the, the wonderful refreshments that we have. We're celebrating uh, 10 years of Bristol Community College's presence in this very building. Uh, and it's a great event for the college. <laughs> you know, I had the honor to be here for the opening and the ribbon cutting. And at the time, the <clears throat> UMass president was uh, William Bolger. And he was here for the uh, cutting of the ribbon with uh, Chancellor Jean McCormick, who sends her apologies, unfortunately, as a commitment and can't be with us today, but sends her best wishes for uh, the great event because it's her 10th anniversary as well uh, here at the Star Store. Um, we've grown from literally ground zero to uh, uh, over 1,700 students per year, or close to 2,000 students now, you know, unduplicated in a year. It's a fabulous success story. And we're still growing, and uh, we're in need of more space, and uh, we're still going uh, strong, providing opportunity for uh, not just the residents of uh, New Bedford, but for the whole region. Um, it's, uh, it's something that we take very seriously at Bristol Community College. Uh, if you know, I always say this, the levels of literacy in this region, the levels of educational attainment in this region need considerable strengthening. And uh, that's why we're here uh, at Bristol Community College is here to address those needs. And uh, we're doing a, you know, just a wonderful job and there are plenty of people to thank for that. Uh, I want to begin with inviting to the podium the Dean of the New Bedford campus who has been here all, all 10 years and counting, uh, Dean Teresa Romanovich. <laughs> Dean Romanovich. glasses before I started this job. Well, first of all, I want to thank everybody. I can't express my appreciation enough. I'm honored to be here with all of you tonight, and I thought I'd take a moment to tell you a little bit about our journey. Um, I walked into the building, as Barbara can attest, with a hard hat on 10 years ago, and uh, the building, as most of us know, was still under construction two weeks before we were ready to open. We, uh, we seem to be good at that. And um, we ended up using the Zyterian to do registration. So we were thinking on our feet. And um, at that point in time, I only had two full-time staff members, Joyce Burns, who's been an amazing right-hand person for me for the last 10 years, and Lillian DeRogius, who's been the librarian and support staff member for us. I also had two part-time people, Holly Fitzgerald, who's with us tonight. And Doreen Henry, who unfortunately passed away way too early in her life, but I did want to recognize her this evening for the contribution that she provided to us. And I wouldn't have survived that first year without members of the President Council who came every single evening and acted as evening as administrators. They really didn't know what they were doing, but we let them stay anyway. <laughs> and we started out with just four programs, eight classrooms, 40 classes, and a dozen dedicated faculty members, many of whom are in this room tonight, and approximately 400 students. We made it through that first year with lots of laughs, people taking baths in the bathroom. I guess that's attributed to being a community um, downtown campus. And hard teamwork. We were a one-stop philosophy. We were trying to be everything to everyone. And yes, a few tears. 9-11 happened about three days after we opened. But we managed, and within two short years, we had grown out of our space. And my new best friends became the developers. Jim Muse, who was here earlier tonight, stepped up to the plate and generously gave us two classrooms and office space down the street. Jeff Pontiff, who's here tonight, also provided additional space for us. And most recently, Gene Lonigan, who helped us expand into 800 Purchase Street and even provided scholarships for our students. They continue and remain to be my best friends. I guess they, like me, want to see us grow more, so help us out. 
And as the years passed, the partnerships thrived, and BCC became the educational and rapid response training choice of the community. We began collaborations with the workforce and economic development of our community, who contributed vastly to the growth of the downtown, and our friends became the WIB, the New Bedford Economic Development Council, the Chamber, Downtown New Bedford, Inc., New Directions, Brenda Francis is here tonight and has given me loads of support as I have gone forward, our K-12 through partnerships, we just uh, did a great collaboration with them on a middle college, uh, and we have some school committee members here and, and representative, uh, oh, and I just saw the superintendent, great, and Superintendent Francis, who her and her dedicated staff have been phenomenal to work with, UMass Dartmouth, uh, Chancellor McCormack, Barbara Lynch, who've been our guide, Lisa Jokum, who've helped tremendously, and the Community Foundation, who've supported us through the years with grants, and the um, Cost Trust Foundation, who also gave us some grants, and the mayor and his staff, who have been outstanding. The mayor's office has uh, given us so much in terms of not only um, staff time, but moral support. As a result of these partnerships, we've been able to secure grants that have helped us to address the needs of a variety of populations, including paraprofessionals, at-risk youth, women in transition, men re-entering society, adult learners, ESOL, Mayan community, and beyond. In addition, we gained a private partnership with Jerry Cavanaugh, who has joined our team. His vision and leadership and commitment to the New Bedford community have, has enabled us to expand in many ways, most importantly e-health, and most recently the Middle College. So that brings me to now. We now have 2,000 students, 30 programs, and growing. <laughs> 20 full-time staff who work full-time and a half, many of which who are grant coordinators. 24 classrooms and growing. Where's Gene? Thank you. I heard he's building six new classrooms for me. We have 12 grants and lots of new friends. I've never walked into a meeting now without knowing some faces. When I first had that hard hat on 10 years ago, I knew very few people sitting in this room today. And now, not only do I know you as my colleagues, but you've become my friends, and I appreciate that. So I want to personally thank each and every one of you because without you, I wouldn't be standing here today, nor would any of us. It took a group of us to do this. You've been my internal partners and my community partners. The legislators have been outstanding in terms of supporting us. The um, previous mayor is here, and he's been a, he was wonderful, and our new mayor, and we look forward to our next mayor as supportive. And lastly, I'd like to give a special thanks to my staff. If they could come forward, please. Come on. They're shy but powerful. These individuals have fed my soul and mainly and my body. They bring me lunch every once in a while to make sure I get it through the day. And they've helped me build a vision of a full campus for all citizens of this community. So the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dream, said Eleanor Roosevelt. I think that applies to all of us. Thank you for believing in our dreams, and drink and enjoy, and take that wine glass home as a, as a gift of our appreciation to all you've done. My thanks to you. Thank you, Terry, and thank you, everyone, for this great. You know, she, Terry mentioned that people work time and a half. They don't get paid for the extra half. Uh, they have to kick that in. Uh, well, uh, going back to that t that day ten years ago, we had quite a uh, quite a uh, uh, celebration. Uh, we had the ribbon cutting. It was very instrumental. I'm going to introduce a couple of people now that were very instrumental in this. And the first person was uh, couldn't be with us today. Uh, and that's Senator Mark Montigny. Uh, he was instrumental in arranging this uh, whole operation uh, for UMass and for uh, Bristol Community College. Uh, he regrets that he can't be here with the Senate uh, business uh, tending to in Boston. Uh, he sends his apologies, but he also asks that uh, 
uh, Mr. Terry Noel from his office uh, come forward just to say a few words, and then we'll meet some of the other people involved. Terry Noel, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Dr. Sperka. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Um, we are here today to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the New Bedford campus of Bristol Community College and the College of Visual Arts um, at UMass Dartmouth. Ten years ago, Sen Senator Mont Montigny stood right here and cut the ribbon. He cut the ribbon to an event and to a dream of his. The event in 2001 was what Senator Montigny envisioned for New Bedford. He, was, he, he truly felt that this building would be the beginning of the revitalization of downtown New Bedford. A few minutes ago, I believe uh, Bob Kazera and a few others were talking about this, this building and how absolutely gorgeous it was when it was the spa store. But I look around today and I think it's even more beautiful. I think this is like the anchor of downtown New Bedford. Along with this building is the Zyterian Museums and the many, many galleries. This was the beginning of the Senator's dream. He dreamt that if he could bring this building to downtown New Bedford, they would come. And thanks to, to Dr. Sprager, who brought over 2,000 students into the downtown New Bedford, I believe Mark's dream, when no one truly believed that it would happen, has happened. This should be and will be Mark's legacy. And as downtown continues to grow and new businesses and new activities flourish, he can thank the many people that believed in him. And again, a special thank you to Dr. Sprager. This is the official citation of the State Senate. Um, it is in recognition and congratulations to Bristol Community College for your 10th anniversary at the Spastor campus and your outstanding commitment to serving the downtown New Bedford. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Thank you very much, Terry. We'll put these uh, on display as well. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, Senator Montigny was uh, very uh, uh, active in his leadership to provide this opportunity. We also had active leadership in the House of Representatives, and uh, I want to uh, uh, invite up for a few comments and justifiably proud of his contribution. Uh, we're in his district here in, uh, in New Bedford, and it's my honor to introduce to you Representative uh, Antonio Cabral. Thank you, my friend. Thank you very much, Jack. It's a pleasure to be here. It's wonderful to be here and celebrate the 10th anniversary of the opening of the campus for what I partially the campus of Bristol Community College and, um, and UMass Dartmouth. Uh, Senator Montegna did wonderful work on the Senate side, and we thank him for being a great partner with us on the House. But after all, it's a two-chamber legislature. So whatever gets approved in the House, uh, in the Senate, has to be approved in the House. And uh, I want to tell you that I, my office, and along with the rest of the delegation, we played a, a very important role in making sure that we passed uh, all the language and all the, uh, the language to actually make this building possible. The language that was actually passed in the House was drafted in my office, because the language that came originally from the Senate uh, could not get enough support from the leadership in the House. So we had to redraft some of it in order to get it through the House and then send it over to a conference committee to iron out the differences between both chambers. So I am very proud of the work that we did. I know Senator Montigny did a wonderful job as well. And we always work extremely well with Senator Montigny. He's been uh, he's someone who loves the city just like I do, as the rest of the delegation does. And, um, and 10 years ago was exciting, but today is even more exciting because we have a lot more to do when it comes to this building and to downtown. Uh, the next project is to have a full-blown downtown campus for Bristol Community College. We've been working. <laughs> We've been working very closely with the governor's office, uh, DCAM, and obviously the President Sprager in trying to make that happen. 
We had one original RFP that went out. It didn't work. Another RFP is in the works. It should be going out shortly for us to finally begin that next step for a full-blown campus uh, downtown. 2,000 students. Uh, that's quite an accomplishment in 10 years, really is. So congratulations to Terry and to all our staff and to President Sprager and this community because we know how important it is uh, to have uh, a campus downtown be Bristol Community College or be UMass Dartmouth. The numbers change, the education numbers change. If you look at all, all the gateway cities in Massachusetts, uh, those that have campuses in the city uh, like Lowell, like Worcester, and other communities that are similar to us, the education attainment level of four year degrees or greater changes substantially because of the influence of the campus being in the heart of the community. And that's what we tend to do, that's what we intend to do in New Bedford. Because we think both UMass Dartmouth and Bristol Community College will be really the catalyst to change uh, not only what's going on downtown, but to be the leaders in helping us change some of these numbers around and really get this community to be where it should be in terms of its work skills, in terms of its education level. And that's how we're going to bring more jobs to the city, is by continuing to do the work that we're doing here with Bristol Community College and UMass Dartmouth. And I'll tell you, we're going to fight every day, every day, to make sure Bristol Community College in the next couple of years has a campus up and running. Hi, right, all. So I'm going to, Bob, you want to come up? Bring Bob as well. I'm going to read a citation, and then Bob will say a few words as well. As uh, one of those colleagues that worked very closely with us when we were crafting the language for this building in, on the house side. But the citation is for Bristol Community College. And uh, Dr. Sprague, I'm going to read it. Right? Okay. <laughs> the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to Bristol Community College in recognition of the 10th anniversary of BCC campus at the Star Store and the college's tireless dedication and countless contributions to the revitalization of downtown New Bedford. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors until the full-blown campus gets built. Given this 26th day of September 2011 at the State House in Boston, signed by Speaker of the House Robert A. DeLeo and offered by myself and Representative Cazera and the rest of the delegation. Thank you very much and congratulations. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to join with all of you this afternoon in celebrating the 10th anniversary of the New Bedford campus of Bristol Community College. It seems like only yesterday when uh, this campus began. And as I was saying to Terry Noel, I had fond memories of when this was a star store and I was a, a young person coming here with my, my mother to do shopping. We've come a long way, but the success of the 10th anniversary is really measured in what uh, the Dean Terry had to say in terms of when the doors opened, there were 400 souls that were touched by that. And today, it's 2,000. That's a five-fold increase. And Dr. Sprager will tell you, he'll be amongst the first to tell you, as he's been telling us for the last 10 years, that those students are new to Bristol Community College. They didn't come from the Fall River campus to New Bedford because it's a shorter distance. Those are new students. I know that he's been saying this because every year he hosts a legislative breakfast telling us how, how Bristol, County is do, uh, Bristol Community College is doing so well with the appropriations that they get. Lately he's been telling us we're doing so well with the appropriations that we get and they keep going down and down and down and we have to start to stem that and, and hopefully we will because that's what government is about. These are resources that touch people's lives, they provide opportunities. As my colleague Tony Cabral told you and as I'll tell you publicly, I said it after my, in the 2006 campaign for re-election, I'm committed, a major priority to me as was Mayor Lang, 
was to increase the presence of Bristol Community College here in New Bedford to get a permanent campus. A permanent campus means office space, it means more classrooms, it means libraries for students, computers for students, lounge areas for students, so that they can feel a part of what their education is supposed to be all about and provide them with an opportunity to get ahead in life. So this is one state legislator, as is Tony Cabral, who is dedicated to increasing the uh, presence of Bristol Community College here in the city of New Bedford. And that's our goal for the next 10 years. And I thank you for giving me this opportunity to, uh, to speak. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Cazero. We've got a, a number of, we just couldn't be here today without the legislative support. You heard of the key instrumental role that uh, Senator Montigny has played in this uh, event, and also Senator Montigny, uh, uh, his uh, strong support for the new campus, uh, for a new campus here in New Bedford. Representative Tony Cabral and Representative Bob Cazero, uh, again, very staunch supporters of BCC and uh, enthusiastic champions for a new campus uh, uh, here in, uh, in uh, New Bedford. I feel that we've gone to 2,000 students and well, with the adequate facilities, we might be able to even double that figure. Uh, so we're very proud of what we do in New Bedford. I don't very often uh, ch venture to speak for the Chancellor, but I, I know that Chancellor McCormick, from our many conversations, stands also in uh, full support of uh, raising educational profile here in New Bedford, and she's doing all that she can uh, for the UMass presence here. Well, we we're moving along. I'd like to introduce some, uh, just some people uh, uh, for you after uh, we, get, we hear from Mayor Lang. Uh, Mayor Scott Lang has been a great supporter for us. Uh, he uh, came as a candidate for mayor years ago, and uh, throughout his time as mayor, uh, there's never been an occasion where uh, I didn't ask for an audience that he didn't grant it immediately. And in fact, many times he's asked for an audience and I granted that immediately as well uh, for the mayor. But uh, he has great vision uh, for education in New Bedford, not just for the city, which he has, but for education in New Bedford and particularly for uh, BCC's role in that vision. So it's my honor uh, to introduce another great champion for BCC, Mayor Scott Lang. To uh, just say a few things, and I know that uh, everyone, the, the entire community supports uh, BCC. The entire community supports community college uh, concept, which means moving a bridge from high school to uh, uh, higher education and then uh, to uh, a university, a graduate degree, whatever, whatever it might be, uh, highly skilled trade, whatever it might be. But I, I want to say a few things that I think are very important. You can't be a vibrant city, you can't be a relevant city, you can't be a city that grows without having an educational quarter, without having uh, fine uh, schools of higher learning. So we have uh, in our city, we have BCC, uh, we have UMass Dartmouth, we have Bridgewater State with the, uh, with the Air Academy, and all of them working together to make sure that we offer our citizens the finest education at affordable prices. Now, the, the great thing about uh, BCC, the great thing about Jack Spraga, the great thing about Terry Romanowicz is that uh, we have all worked together. I mean, when I say we, I mean everyone in this room on some very important projects. So let me tell you the ones that stand out in my mind. Uh, aside for going, building, as, as uh, Bob said, five times, aside for 30 different uh, programs and different, different uh, ways to receive your associate's degree, uh, we have the Wise Woman program, which is something that is uh, completely, completely necessary, important, and, uh, and great for our city, which specializes specifically in giving uh, young women an opportunity to, uh, to begin their educational attainment. That is a great program. That's a program that goes above and beyond what you might normally think of a community college offering its citizens. We have the e-health program, which uh, broke uh, the lid, the ceiling, on the idea of, of uh, a public-private uh, learning partnership a program that certainly has uh, allowed us to go from somewhere 75 new, uh, new admissions each year for BCC's great nursing and medical program up to as many as uh, 400 students before long down here uh, in uh, New Bedford, which is so important again because this is a very important job for the 21st century. Uh, just recently, in the last week, we uh, began the Middle College, and I'm happy to report I was just told by 
uh, the dean that we have uh, our first class of approximately uh, 20 plus students. I know they're still in the final process of fine tuning some more. But this is, this, is the ultimate, this is the ultimate concept in public education. This means that no young man or woman, no adult will be left behind, that they'll have the opportunity to receive a high school and college credits uh, to tailor their learning to, uh, to the best way that we can uh, uh, adjust uh, to their very, very uh, interesting, dynamic, and uh, in some cases, extremely uh, uh, trying schedule on a day-to-day -day basis. Every young man and woman in this city deserves the opportunity for a free high school uh, education. And that's what this will uh, provide. And eventually it will provide the ability to go from the non-graduate uh, completers, uh, the, the uh, young men and women who drop out right through high school, middle school, uh, middle college, which means associate's degree at a certain point, and then off on to college. Recapture people who we know have the greatest potential whatsoever. That was like a Mazel Tov thing where someone <laughs> stepped on the glass. I appreciate that very much. Um, when I'm done speaking, everyone, glasses on the floor, right? Uh, but, the, but the point of this is that uh, this is a creative educational learning institution. Uh, Jack brings tremendous, tremendous uh, uh, energy, has a fantastic staff working with the university and the public school system. The community colleges are going to be the backbone of the educational, uh, uh, of the 21st century, the educational revival of the 21st century for the seam, for the people who aren't making it in the educational system that we have today. And it's the community colleges that have the resources working with both the high school, uh, the high school public school systems and our university system uh, that will mean the difference between uh, Massachusetts having people who don't attain and everyone has the opportunity to. So I'm very excited about this. I do have a uh, resolution uh, from the city on behalf, and I know I'm sure city council is here as well. I know school committee is. I'll give it on behalf of every government uh, body and all the citizens of our city congratulating you, uh, President Spraga, and all of your staff. Uh, we appreciate all the efforts you've done, and we're looking forward to uh, continuing to work with you. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, there's been no stronger champion than uh, Mayor Lang, uh, uh, who has really pushed forward. You hear how passionate he is. Uh, don't make the mistake of asking him about it, what he thinks about MCATs, okay? But, uh, <laughs> he's very passionate about that, and in fact, it was his inspiration that helped drive our uh, recent announcement about the uh, middle college, creation of a middle college here in New Bedford, working hand-in-hand -in -hand with the superintendent and the uh, New Bedford Public Schools, uh, we seek to make a difference, and uh, his vision is instrumental in that. I just have uh, one other uh, resolution that I'd like to an announce for you, and that is from Senator Scott Brown. Senator Brown wanted to be here, but uh, there are pressing matters in Washington, and he did provide the uh, a, a resolution for us and uh, a resolution of support, and he has been a staunch supporter for Bristol Community College from the days when he was a state senator out in, uh, out in uh, Attleboro uh, and helped us get started in the Attleboro campus. So uh, very appreciative of uh, Senator uh, uh, Scott Brown. Uh, also, we have a resolution from the uh, uh, New Bedford uh, City Council, and we have Dennis Lawrence, who is going to uh, uh, read it for us. Good. Thank you, yeah, Dennis. Thank you. Dennis Lawrence, ladies Thank and you gentlemen. very much. Just so uh, if you'll allow me just to recognize my colleagues that are here, Councilor at Large David Owls, Council Ward 2, Steve Martins, Council Ward 5, Jane Gonzalez, and uh, myself here as a council at large. I, I just wanted to say just a couple of things because I know you get you'd rather be drinking, believe me, I understand that. <laughs> Trust me, because I would too. But what I do want to say is something that uh, I, I've been fortunate enough to be on the city council for 14 years. And I've been, it's been very fortunate and very proud to support the initiatives of BCC when the seeds were planted by uh, former Mayor Kalis and Senator Montigny, and then to work alongside of, of Mayor Lang and my colleagues on the city council in growing uh, BCC. But I am humbled by the fact that we could plant all the seeds in the world that we want to, and we could show the city of New Bedford off as much as we want to, but this would not have been possible without the commitment of BCC and you, Jack.
We could, we could show you the goods, but you had to believe that the goods would work. And you did, and you have created an incredible establishment. And I am proud to say, not only as a city councilor, but as the father of an 18-year-old, that my daughter is the 1,999th student this year at BCC. And she had her first Portuguese test today, and she better have passed it. <laughs> and with that, Jack, thank you for being a friend, but thank you for being a leader. And on behalf of the New Bedford City Council, an official resolution, be it hereby known to all that the city of New Bedford, Massachusetts, hereby offers its sincerest congratulations to Bristol Community College in recognition of the celebration of its 10th anniversary of the downtown New Bedford campus. The entire citizenry extends its very best wishes on this memorable occasion and expresses the hope for continued good fortune given this 26th day of September 2011. It's signed by the council president who could not be here but sends his congratulations. It's offered by myself and the remaining members of the New Bedford City Council. Thank you, Godspeed, and keep on growing. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. I, uh, uh, it's wonderful to have the support of the, uh, of the city council, the mayor's office, the legislator's office, also the school department. And I want to recognize uh, two people from the uh, school committee that are here, uh, Dr. John Fletcher, Dr. Fletcher. John Fletcher, ladies and gentlemen. And Marlene Pollack, Marlene Pollack. Both great supporters for BCC. And also another supporter for BCC, you've heard his name mentioned, but I want to personally thank him for all he did as we got started in this project, and that's uh, Mayor uh, Fred Kalis. Mayor Fred Kalis is here. Thank you very much. Well, uh, I, one last thing to just to show you that in addition to the wonderful educational um, facility that we have, the Star Store is also a award winner for architectural uh, benefits, and so Chancellor McCormick and myself uh, went up to Boston to receive this award, uh, and it's the Paul Songus Award for uh, uh, the Star Store building and the architectural uh, beauty of the building that you're in. So I, I want to thank everyone for this, and uh, as Representative Cazero, he mentioned he stole my thunder. I was going to say that uh, when this started, I was afraid that uh, we would only get only uh, the New Bedford residents who are already going to Fall River, and that has not been the case at all. We've opened new opportunities, which is what we're all about, new educational opportunities, affordability, accessibility, and uh, we are able to, very proud to say we're here to provide opportunities for a better life through education for the residents, not only of uh, New Bedford, but of the region. And it's our honor to be here. I thank you all for coming, and uh, congratulations on the 10th anniversary. Thank you.